Hello paper crafters! Today I'm going to use some new Spellbinders dice from the new Shadowbox collection to create a gift box that you can place a dimensional card into and send it through the mail. This type of box uh, will also do great for chocolate bars, notebooks and uh, other smaller flatter items. So let's get started! This is my card. I cannot mail it in an envelope because it has that uh, 3D flower on it. It measures 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half inches. And this is the die set that I'm going to use for the box. It creates a shadow box that is 3 quarters of an inch thick. I have also pre-cut some pieces of paper. I will need one big one to create the lid, three bottom ones, plus four strips to create the shadow box. I have also die-cut four little hinges using the die from the set. You will see all the measurements on the screen now, and uh, these are the ones that you will need for an A2 size card. Now I'm going to use the dies from the set to give the right shape to those strips of paper. I'm going to use the smaller die for shorter pieces and those larger dies with tabs for a longer strip. Now I'm going to send it all through the die cutting machine. Then I will be repeating the process because I need two shorter pieces and uh, two identical longer pieces. The dice also create um, some score lines. I'm not sure if you can, can see it on the patterned paper now, but they are there. And what I need to do now is I have to connect the top uh, score lines with the bottom ones using the scoring board. This way the scoring lines will go all the way through those uh, strips of paper. After I have created all the score lines, I can go ahead and crease the paper along all those scoring lines. As always, all the tools and supplies that I'm using will be listed on my blog, as well as in the description below the video. What I have to do now is I have to connect all the pieces uh, without overlapping them. So I'm placing them edge to edge and I'm using those little hinges to connect uh, all the strips of paper, just like that. I am alternating the longer side pieces with the shorter top and bottom pieces. I keep on doing that until I have all four strips of paper connected into one big train. You see, I have also attached one little hinge at the end, and this is what this shape looks like at the moment. Now I'm going to flip it over and apply some adhesive right here along the edge of the wider tab. I'm doing it on all four strips of paper. Then I'm going to assemble all four sides of this shadow box. So all I have to do is to curl it up like that and um, stick it down. I'm pressing it a little bit using a longer stick and this way everything stays attached. I'm going to repeat this process for all four sections. The last step before assembling the shadow box is to fold in all those tabs that you can see here inside at a 90 degree angle. Those tabs give some extra sturdiness to the frame and it's not going to be so easy to crush. After it's done, putting the frame together is a matter of a few seconds. You just fold all the pieces like shown and uh, then I'm using the last little hinge to attach the ends of the frame like that. If I notice that the corners wiggle a little bit as I'm moving them, I'm just adding a tiny dot of glue inside and this way the frame is going to stay put. This is actually quite a sturdy frame. 
Although I didn't use any heavy-duty cardstock, it's just a regular patterned paper. To finish off the shadow box, I just have to attach the bottom, so I have applied some adhesive onto the bottom piece, and I'm placing my frame on top of it, aligning the edges and pressing it down slightly. You can use this shadow box as a 3D card, or you can use it to frame cards or pictures. But I will take it just one step further to create the gift box. So I'm taking the large piece of paper, I'm scoring it at 6 inches, and then at 6.5, and, and then I'm going to fold it to create the box lid shape. All I have to do is to apply some adhesive onto the spine and onto the shorter tab and stick it to the bottom of my box. By the way, it's better to use extra strong adhesive for the spine. You can use either um, some strong double-sided tape or the liquid adhesive. So this is the box shape, I just have to add a couple of ribbons for a closure. I'm going to stick down one piece onto the bottom of the box and the other one onto the lid. Then I'm going to use the remaining two bottom pieces that I have pre-cut. One of them will uh, go on top of the lid at the inner side and another one at the bottom. Those additional pieces of paper are going to hide the ends of the ribbon and they are also going to make a box a bit sturdier. To embellish the box, I'm going to add this gorgeous frame, it's also from the latest Spellbinders release, and uh, I've also added uh, this die-cut sentiment. I didn't add any mounting tape or dimensional embellishments because I want to keep this box completely flat so that I can put it inside uh, the bubble foam envelope. So this is how the card fits inside the box. Then I'm just going to close up this box and tie a bow. Those shadow box dies are extremely versatile. You can create any size uh, frame or shadow box with them. I will show you the larger one that I made very soon. It's 12 by 12 inches. Don't forget that this video is a part of giveaway and if you want to win some prizes from Spellbinders, please visit my blog and leave a comment there. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial, have a wonderful day and I'll be seeing you really soon!